President Biden intensifying as Democrats on Capitol Hill grow increasingly anxious about his campaign in the wake of that debate performance. At least four senior House Democrats joining five of their colleagues calling for change at the top of that ticket. Voters do have questions. And uh, personally, um, I love Joe Biden. I don't know that the interview on Friday night did enough to answer those questions. And so I think this week is going to be absolutely critical. If you can be convinced that you cannot defeat Donald Trump will you stand down? It depends if, if the Lord Almighty comes out and tells me that, I might do that. President Biden is urging Democrats to come together. In a lengthy letter to Democrats, the president says it's time for the party to come together so they can have the best chance at beating Trump. He's also doubling down on his commitment to stay in the race. And he followed that up by calling into his favorite morning show. That would be Morning Joe. We're not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. I wouldn't be running if I didn't absolutely believe that I am the best candidate to beat Donald Trump in 2024. We had a Democratic nominating process where the voters spoke clearly. I won 14 right. million of those votes, et cetera. So I, I, I just want, I not only believe that from the beginning, but I wanted to reassert and demonstrate that it's true. And I'm going to be doing that all through this week and from here on. There's no doubt that there's a pretty big divide. I think there's a lot of House members, particularly those that are in swing states or in swing districts, who are deeply concerned, right? If there wasn't a real problem, if they weren't hearing from the base, if they weren't hearing from voters, you wouldn't have people huddling with Hakeem Jeffries yesterday and expressing the concern, including some calls, additional calls for the president to step aside if it, it weren't real. This week, he will try to prove that he is up to the task. He will be standing on the world stage at the NATO summit here in Washington, and then holding a rare solo press conference on Thursday. This letter as desperation as, listen, I've got the delegates uh, under DNC rules, which we'll, you can get into. Those delegates are bound unless there was some kind of revolt. And when we look at a revolt, could all those delegates actually be dispelled from the Democrat National Convention if they were to vote for someone else other than Joe Biden because they are bound delegates. Now, the DNC works differently, Logan, than the RNC. So we're digging into those rules. But I think that's what he's building up to is by the time I get to my convention in August, you need to trust me, uh, stop, stop hurting the campaign or Donald Trump is going to win the election. So what does it tell me, Logan? One, their internal polls show them sinking in the key demographics. I would think that is uh, uh, women, probably 35 and over, especially with kids. Uh, you've got uh, black Americans, especially black American males and Hispanic voters. Uh, so if you see more of the same from uh, President Biden, you're going to get more of these letters. But I think he, Logan, thinks, well, I'm going into the convention and I've got those bound delegates. And let me tell you what's happening. Very smart Democrat attorneys are looking for every loophole possible to unbound those delegates. I have no doubt that is happening as we speak. From those down Pennsylvania Avenue in both a new letter to members of Congress and a phone interview on live TV, Biden saying he isn't going anywhere. The president is back at the White House today after a weekend of campaigning in his home state of Pennsylvania, old home state of Pennsylvania, talking about how big the crowds he was drawing were. And as some Democratic lawmakers say, he isn't up for a second term. His message to them in a two page letter this morning addressing the Democratic saying, quote, I want you to know that despite all the speculation in the press and elsewhere, I am firmly committed to staying in this race, to running this race to the end and to beating Donald Trump. Biden says it's the voters that chose him to be here and says he doesn't care what the big names trying to push him out think. The doors. So he's got a strong base right now, President Trump, and he's building on this new base, which believes that uh, Biden is just not competent and should not have his hands near the nuclear code or directing our military, especially when he forgot that when he withdrew from Afghanistan, not no Americans died. 13 of our bravest, strongest young Americans died in that botched withdrawal. So when you, you see that again, and a letter like this, Logan, it just smacks of desper des desperation. Uh, I think that the money problem is probably gigantic in the Biden team. I've been on campaigns like this when you hit a big, it doesn't mean you can't come back, it's happened before. But when you hit a big slope like this, Logan, what you have to really watch out for is the entire team either going on a volunteer basis or being let go uh, because they can't afford to live on a volunteer basis. So I would love to know 
how bad Joe Biden's fundraising is right now. But I have to tell you, I bet it's horrendous because the Hollywood crowd has left. Morning, President Biden defiant as ever, adamant he can survive this crisis. The number of House Democrats pushing Biden to leave, both publicly and in a call of top House Democrats, was nearing a dozen, as others stopped just short. Either he has to win overwhelmingly or he has to pass the torch to someone who can't. President Biden is declining multiple calls now for him to drop out of the race for re-election in a letter released just a moment ago. Let me read you one of the first lines. I want you to know that despite all the speculation in the press and elsewhere, I am firmly committed to staying in this race, to running the race to the end, and to beating Donald Trump. He seems not to be able to compute the fact that uh, people have these questions about him. The two groups, rather, that you should really watch for, though, are the Congressional Black Caucus that has backed Joe Biden through and through and is really sort of, you know, and obviously James Clyburn is part of that, and Nancy Pelosi. Um, Nancy Pelosi is one of the few people that Joe Biden really deeply respects that considers, you know, a peer, someone that has really done the, the, the nitty gritty of politics for a long time. And those are the two groups you should really watch for, because if anyone would even come close to the Lord Almighty standard that Joe Biden set, um, it would be those. Listen. There's no savior, there's no mulligan, they're stuck with the guy, they're trying to find ways out of it, they're eating each other up as a party. I love watching it, I encourage more people to watch it, but the reality is, is, is a week from now, two weeks from now, Joe Biden's going to be the nominee, he's going to be president, and we're going to have a vigorous debate through November, and I think the, the debate's going to ultimately result in the Donald Trump presidency. This is still a single-digit race in every single poll, and that means it's not, uh, it's not over yet, 100%. Well, if you listen to President Biden on Friday night, he, he's, he basically laughed off the polls, uh, laughed.